Hi, this is Michael J. Crawford. And this is Skirkova. And this is the Rational Roundtable. Cue cool music and video. <laughs> I don't know what Christ would have said about those latter two. I would feel comfortable joining you and saying that he wouldn't have condoned molesting children, um, assuming that he existed as an individual, uh, which I think he probably did, um, and I'm willing to assume he did for the sake of this conversation. Right. We're not um, arguing over the existence of Christ. We're about Christ. Right, right, You're right, right. But if you um, read the Gospels, if you read what the, Christ... Taught, at least the character of Christ, at, at, at a minimum, sure, I would say he would have disapproved of that. But it's sort of not... Let me clarify what I said, what I meant earlier when I talked about that not being the focus, kind of leaving that aside as a sort of a side effect. Mm -hmm. um, as, as, much, as easily as, as we can agree that it was a terrible thing, and as, as fertile as the ground might be, if we're using that as a ground to criticize religion as a whole... It's not the it's not the tactic I would choose to go about the task. In other words, this 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 is not necessarily a good example of what I would use to indict religion as a whole. Um, but this is exactly the kind of stuff that people like Hitchens and Dawkins and and other atheists will use. <laughs> well, they do talk about it, but I to borrow a page from from those atheist books, especially specifically from Hitchens. Um, I, I would focus more, and I, I, I wish I could remember the details. He brings it up in his book, God is Not Great, where he talks about it, it was, a, it was a, a militant Christian genocidal uh, warlord in somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, he slaughtered a lot of people. He was into the whole child soldiers thing you hear about all the time. Uh, he did all these terrible things, and he was in there with a, uh, I don't remember if it was UN or if it was one of the private organizations was a relief effort, and um, he, uh, he he was talking to a a Western Protestant minister who was part of the relief effort, and I mean, he, as far as I know, and from what I understand, they were having a polite conversation. It wasn't like Hitchens was deliberately antagonizing him, but um, the topic came up, and he said, "Well, here's the problem." Um, the person who comes here and, and, and to participate in this relief, to bring relief to these people, to bring help and to do good, could certainly be a Christian or an atheist. But the man who did this, who created this situation, could only have been religious. There is no, sec there is no way that some of, the, some of these atrocities could be justified from a non-religious point of view. And that's not an indictment specific to Christianity. Right, right. Um, he believes that, it's an that, indictment of, of religion. But here's the thing, and, and this is, um, you know, one of my favorite atheists on TV, Bill Maher, was talking about this very type of thing. <laughs> Give me a start. I mean, Bill Maher may be an atheist, but he's no skeptic. Yeah, I don't totally agree with you on that. But I think that in the, but there's something interesting. He is fun to watch, though. Yeah. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about the dangers of religion. And mm -hmm. he had uh, an atheist on the program who was attempting to defend uh, the idea of religion. And Bill Maher was... An, athe an atheist was defending religion? Yes. Just so I understand you? Yeah, yeah okay. She, she was right. actually trying to be defensive of religion, and Bill Maher was... Well, it wasn't S.C. Cup, was it? I don't know what her name was, so it might have been. Oh, I have a feeling it might have been, but um, go ahead. But at any rate, um, and then some one of the, the Christians brings up the invariable comparison that... that, that that I've been purposely not saying because I think it's... Stalin, Hitler, Mao? Well, particularly Stalin and Mao and Pol Pot, because they were all... Okay. You know, I, I wouldn't go Hitler because you could argue whether Hitler was an atheist or not. You could argue... I would certainly Hitler. say so. Huh? I would say, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would have a robust argument about that, for sure. But so we'll focus... He was, he was raised a Catholic, but then... In you know, like if you look at his public papers, he was endorsing the church. In his private papers, he was condemning the church. You know, the guy was all over the map, and I don't care. 
Well, I, I believe he was some sort of sort of a a pagan. That's possible too. So I, I don't um, know. Sort of Catholic, as, as, you know, Catholic in one sphere, but secretly pagan. I, I don't think he was at any point uh, a secularist. Right. Now, I Stalin, think, but, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot will agree we're atheists, correct? In the, in the very loose sense of the term, which is, to be fair, the sense well, that I would not to use most of the time. Yeah. You know, in the sense that they lack a belief in God, yes. And I will go farther and I'll say that is the definition I prefer to use. The problem is... The problem is most people, when they use the word atheist, they, 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 and I, and I know that you don't necessarily fall into this category. People picture that as a, as a worldview, as, um, as a club one belongs to that comes with political opinions and so on and so forth. And, and it's not that. Um, but, but okay, in the sense that they probably do not believe in anything that we would call a god, sure. Uh, I, I'm not specific, I'm not, not really good on the details of those two individuals, but if we were going to talk about Kim Jong-il, I could definitely... Right. Well, and there's another example. But, uh, what Bill Maher pointed out, and correctly so, is that what, what these totalitarian states do is that they create a religion of the state. Sure, yeah. yeah. You know. That's that's an excellent point. And, and so he was, Bill, not, Bill Maher is not the only person I've heard say that. Right, I've and heard other people make that point as well, but this just was fresh in my head. And I think that, um, you know, yes, there's there's truth to that, that, that religion is dangerous. But religion is not necessarily theism. You follow me on this? Okay. I think I can see room for that statement. Yeah. And so... While you can say, that, you know, I think, that, and, and in fact, you know, you constantly hear among some of the uh, evangelical churches that uh, God is not about a religion, God is about a relationship kind of, you know, type that of thing. That kind and of annoys me. I, I'm sure it does, but, but at the same it time. It annoyed me when I was Christian, too, to be fair. But I think fair. that there's some truth to that, in that I think that religious dogma Religion itself can be a very... If you want to talk about dogma, sure. But the word religion is just as applicable to that relationship as it is to the dogma. They're both religion. One's dogma, one's a relationship. Okay, I'm more than willing to draw a distinction between those two. But the word religion is just as applicable, I would argue, to both. Well, I think where, we, where, we, where the problem lies is that we have too broad a category when we say religion is dangerous, religion is destructive. Instead, this might be true. Yeah. Instead, maybe what we should say is dogmatic religion is inherently destructive and dangerous. Dogmatic religion such mm. as certain wings of the evangelical church. Dogmatic I would certainly say that dogmatic that religion is more immediately dangerous. But, but I, would, I, I would go that far, but I would not go so far as to say that only dogmatic religion is dangerous. Because the thing is, as long as you are... Um, in the, the words of Voltaire, anyone who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. If, let's say, and uh, this came up in the context of one of my, I don't know if it was with you or if it was with Bossman 103, one of the discussions I've, had, I've been had where I said, yeah, it was Bossman 103, where I said, let's say for the sake of argument that you and I formed a coalition, people who think like you and people who think like me formed a coalition and said, let's, you know, and when we had, for some reason, the means to do this, eradicated fundamentalism and what you would call dogmatic religion. Mm -hmm. Not by killing people, but say we just could magically convert everyone to either atheism or some harmless religion. Maybe we could make them all Anglicans or Unitarian Universalists. But um, however we went about it, we pulled this off, let's say, and suddenly, you know, there's no more fighting over Palestine, there's all sorts of peace in the Middle East, no one is trying to kill Salman Rushdie anymore. All these wonderful things are happening. Um, give it 500 years, and suddenly you'll have this right-wing version of the Anglican Church that's trying to, I don't know, Scotland, you'll have this hardcore fundamentalist Unitarian branch that's... Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, you, you let people have these 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 beings that can talk to them, and they always say the same things that you would say to yourself. And, and I'm saying, I, I, I say this from personal experience, and also from my understanding of the human experience. God tells you what you want to hear. 
God feels the same way that you do about taxation, gun control, and the death penalty, whether you're liberal or conservative. Um, and th there are crazy people out there. There are people with, uh, with actual mental disabilities, with, with schizophrenia, say. Um, and, th and then again, there are also people who are just raised to have some kooky thoughts about how the world works. And if you let, you know, if you let this, this idea of gods and angels and devils and demons and uh, heaven and hell especially exist, it's going it, it, to... It, going to become something harmful if you let it, if you give it enough time. It will. Um, it can't not do that. Because if you take anyone who believes in salvation, no matter what else they believe in, if they believe in salvation from an, from an afterlife point of view, from a heaven or hell, or, or even without hell, if you believe that there is some realm in which the consequences that happen matter more than the consequences that happen in this world, that's dangerous. See, Look at the Muslim... I don't think that Christians... And, and I've heard this argument before, where, where people will say that because Christians believe that the next life is more important than the current life... They it's not just Christians. Christians. Well, I, I know, but no. Christians is usually what it's thrown at. Because, let's face it, most people... Christians aren't even the first ones I think of, uh, and to be perfectly honest, and not trying to be antagonistic or politically incorrect. The first ones I think of are, are, are Muslim terrorists, um, because, um, you know... But, but here's the thing. Is well, you go, go ahead. Let me, yeah, go ahead. You, you do have the, the, the terrorists are different than your rank-and-file Muslims. Your typical Muslim is not oh, going to strap, yeah. strap a bomb to himself and blow up a China store. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Now, you have the extreme groups that are willing to do that and are willing to brainwash people into thinking that somehow this is a good idea to do this. And How, how well do you think, if you were um, a Muslim cleric, mm -hmm. how easy would you find it to criticize those terrorists from purely theological grounds? 